Hey guys, it's John from John's DIY Playground. Welcome back to part two of my two-part series on setting up If This Then That on your cell phone and getting it to work with a particle photon. Um, we did in the first part of the video uh, a very simple demonstration of when the particle goes online and offline. But in today's video, what we're going to do is add a photoresistor to the circuit and put some code up there, send variables to the uh, particle cloud, and then send notifications to our phone, acting kind of like an alarm system if the light levels on this pho photon go below a certain threshold. So let's get started. If you didn't see my first tutorial, I just want to cover this system illustration for 30 seconds, show what we have. We've got our particle photon sitting in our house. Uh, connected with what's going to be a photoresistor to measure the light level and we're going to be sending that data to our particle cloud server on the internet uh, talking back and forth with the if this then that service separate service I showed how to set that up in the previous video and from there when we hit a certain threshold or number we're going to send that information as an alert to our phone so let's show the hardware side I made this illustration using a program called Fritzing to show what our breadboard side looks like. So here we have our particle photon represented on the breadboard. And we're going to take photoresistor and hook it between A0 and A5 and then a 1 kilo ohm resistor between the A5 and the ground. We'll set the A5 as our input and measure the voltage there. And we'll set A0 as an output and that'll feed a positive voltage here and this will act like a voltage divider where we can measure the difference based on how much light is hitting our photoresistor. This is our web IDE. It's located over at build.particle.io and this code I'll have available on my GitHub site that will be in the info box below this video. It's a very very short um, program. It's only 60 lines total, even less if I took out all of this commenting, but I wanted to leave that in there for you guys to, to have as a reference. If you go ahead and click verify on there, it'll actually check and make sure the code is okay. And a little tip here, if you click on this small circle, it shows the memory usage just in case you're curious about a certain program. You can see this is very, very small. We're only using 3% of the total flash available. So very simple program. Um, we're going to have the photoresistor, as I mentioned before, between the A5 and A0 pins. Uh, we're going to use a millis type of uh, check instead of having a delay uh, command to make the thing check the resistor every 10 seconds in this particular example. Um, then we will actually keep track of the light value and we're going to actually make a category so it'll be um, dark or medium or bright. We do that down here in the main loop. So. This is standard setup area where you turn things on and off, set up your declaring your inputs and outputs. Um, I also have to declare uh, last time we checked the resistor timer, so that's just initialization in this point. And then you have very um, simple loop that looks at when's the last time we checked. And if it's more than the 10 seconds since last time, it'll run through this loop. Um, categorization, as I mentioned, um, it's this is how you would publish something of light medium or dark light levels uh, less than 500 are called dark if it's greater than 500 or equal to it or less than 900 it's considered medium and if it's greater or equal to 900 it's considered bright now the other thing I have is this sprint F or S print F command it's a little bit tricky but what it's doing is it's taking the um, value of light level and putting it into um, uh, string variables is what uh, we're going to publish as far as our publishing of the uh, this string variable called light level so you can see I'm putting some category called sensor value and then posting light level which is derived from this line here so if I connect my particle photon as I'll do right now we'll just plug it in fires up very very quickly and we can flash the code to it basically over Wi-Fi by clicking on this flash icon here and it builds it really quick the LED on the particle starts flashing magenta and then reboots itself uh, it says the flash is successful so what we do now is go to this dashboard.particle.io it shows in real time what's happening with your particle so you can see it's already starting to report light level of medium 
and a value of 746 so we can see that it's working right now so every 10 seconds I should get a new value um, and category for the light level now if I put a flashlight on it and light up the photoresistor we'll see what that does and within the next 10 seconds here 2790 so you can see it's considered a bright so next we'll set up if this then that to send us alerts when let's say I break the beam and we go either to dark um, or so let's say a value below um, our medium value so let's set that up now on if this then that now we're on the if this then that site um, if you're not familiar with this and are wanting more information on my first tutorial of this series I go a little more in depth of how to set this up with your particle photon but let's assume you have all that set up and create a new recipe so in this case we're going to choose that this is going to be our particle photon so just search on that and then we're going to look for a new event being published and in this case it's called light level and we only want to get notification let's say if the light level status goes to dark um, the idea being if we have a break beam sensor or something like that and the beam gets broken and the sensor suddenly goes dark um, we want to send an alert to our phone so this is the trigger point and hit create trigger and then our that action is going to be to notify our phone so if you just search on that as if notifications that's what's going to alert our phone so then we're going to actually send a notification and say that basically the device name is a generic field playground one is the name of our device and it's going to say publish dark and then that's it you can hit create action and that's the end of the recipe you just hit create recipe and it's all set so now it's going to look for this immediately um, in our recipes if we take a look um, it's turned on at this point and my sensor is sitting here right now at medium light level and I've got my phone nearby so we should hear it make an alert if I cover the sensor now which I'm going to do it's just gone to dark and I'll leave it there and there's your immediate uh, response to the phone it just set off the uh, trigger and the if this then that you can see it also checked it right there after the dark so that's how you set up uh, if this then that to work with a sensor that you're publishing data to on particle photons cloud hope you learned something here and uh, appreciate you watching if you have any questions please leave them in the info box below okay guys that's the end of part two of this two-part series on if this then that and getting it to work with your photon hope you learned something today feel free to leave any questions or comments in the info box below um, I try to get to as many uh, questions answered directly as I can. So thanks for watching. Hope you learned something. Please click like and subscribe for more videos from me. This is John from John's DIY Playground. Have a great day.